Pastor Conway. My, my, my. Man, you preaching the whole word today. This is, this is, this is, this, I, that's why I know that God, that's why I know God ordained this moment in my life. Mm. And God ordained you to be a part of this moment in my life. And one thing, I may not listen to God all the time, but I do actually recognize his voice. Mm. And so when he speaks, I, I go follow. So uh, thank you so much. What I, what I would like for you to do, just from an impromptu standpoint, I'm submitted to, to your words right now. I want you to take me through a vow of abstinence, and I'm ready to make this commitment on today. But, man, first of all, let me just tell you, I'm just, I'm just really, really proud that you are you are trying to honor God with your life. I just think so few people want to do that. I never imagined my journey would inspire people all over the world. Hello, my name is Nema and I'm from Zambia. So I love the Dear Future Wifey podcast. For me to see people being so real, so honest and so true about the real situations in life. Hey, I'm Natalie from Belgium and I would like to, to say thank you. I value your content because it is Christ-centered. You have set a standard in love. Dear Future Wifey Podcast has um, opened my understanding. I highly recommend that everyone, whether you're single, you're married, you're divorced, you're widowed, everyone to go follow this podcast. Continue with me as I discover, uncover, and recover love. I'm Latera R. Whitfield, and welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, Latarius R. Whitfield. Listen, I am so excited. This is the last episode of 2020. Y'all been on this amazing journey with me. Hey, if you haven't subscribed to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast, stop shacking up with us. Go ahead, make a commitment and subscribe. And also make sure that you share this video. This is a video that, I mean, every man across this world needs to hear this is going to be a powerful powerful episode um without further ado i have an amazing mighty man in the kingdom of god on the episode today this is a very sensitive episode for me and uh as we go along in this episode you'll see why but this man is the lead pastor of one community church uh his whole platform is targeting the hearts and the minds of singles and led a powerful ministry at Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship as the, as the director of singles. And we're gonna talk about what he said one day when I visit his church to literally convict me. So without further ado, welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast, my new homie, Dr. <laughs> Conway Edwards. Come on, come on. My pleasure. Hello, everybody. Great to be here with you guys. It is an honor, and I am really excited about this episode. So thanks for having me, man. So, Dr. Conway. Yes, sir. So January the 5th, I decided, I kept hearing a lot of talk about your church, and they said that this is an amazing ministry. And I said, you know what? I'm going to start the year off visiting one community church. Come on. So I made the hike all the way from Cedar Hill to Plano, Texas. <laughs> And uh, I went because I was going to uh, surprise a friend of mine who was in the in the drama ministry. I didn't know that she was at the Prosper campus that day. Mm -hmm. And um, I ended up visiting the Plano campus on the way going to church. And I'm going to tell you this because we like on the podcast, we keep it lit. We yep. live intentionally and transparently. So on this podcast, you're going to hear me just keep it lit. All right. So you cool with that, right? I'm cool. Let's do it. All right. So on the way going to church, I had a conversation with a friend of mine. She, she was talking to me about uh, my journey of singleness. And she okay. said, Lateris, uh, her name is Elsa. She said, Lateris, are you practicing abstinence? I said, no. I said, no, I'm not practicing abstinence. She said, but you are, you're a Christian man. Why would you not be practicing abstinence? I said, because I'm a Christian man and I'm not practicing abstinence. And then she was like, Latera, that's just wrong. God wants more for you. I said, listen, I don't want to hear all that. I know the word. I'm in my singleness journey. This is what I decide to do in the future. I believe that I'm going to make a commitment to, uh, for abstinence. But right now, this is what I'm going to do. She said, where are you on your way going to? I said, I'm on my way to one community church. She said, I'm going to pray that Pastor Conway says something to you that convicts your heart. I said, Pastor Conway ain't going to say nothing to me. I don't care what he <laughs> says to me. Pastor Conway got him a Jada to go home to. Listen, I don't care what Pastor Conway got to say. I am content and I'm fine. He ain't going to say nothing to me. My, my, my. And 
God had the final say. So what I'm going to show you is um, your media ministry was so kind and gracious to send me the the sermon clarity. And it was the eight. It was a nine a.m. service wow. where um, you said this. So I want you to you're, take a look calling. at this. So Always I said th- this is my sermon. Let me say it another way. The serious clarity. Don't let your craving. This is what you said. Allow you to miss fulfilling your call. My God. Don't let your flesh Where? rise up inside of you <laughs> and cause you to miss what God's been calling you to do. Fellas, let me talk to you for a moment. Don't let your flesh rise up in you and cause you to make decisions. Listen to me now. Hold that on. Will you affect didn't hear the first the time, did you? So I had to repeat it again. Yeah, yeah, you, had, you, had to, you had to repeat it. Dig it in a little deeper. Watch what flesh. you really say right here. Fellas, I'm talking to you. Ladies, sit back, relax, get some popcorn. Fellas, I'm talking to you. Fellas, don't let your flesh. Let me talk to single man first. Single man. Quit sowing your oats everywhere. Oh, my God. I want it to simmer in your soul. Mm -hmm. It's a new decade. Stop the nonsense. Single man. Settle down and go get married to somebody. Mm -hmm. And quit trying to figure out if she's the right one, she's the right one, she's the right one. She, why am I focused on this area? She's the right one, she's the right one. She's the right one. <laughs> she's the right one. Hey, enough. Go get God's word. It says she need to have the fruit of the spirit and then go marry her. You don't need no long evaluation. She got the fruit of the spirit. Ask a couple of people about her that know her and then go marry her. Quit the foolishness. I didn't say this in any other service, so there's somebody in here that need to hear this. My God. Quit letting your circumstance, well, Pastor, I've been hurt by this one. I've been hurt by this. That's because you're looking for a fool and you're following your heart. Follow the word of God. Anyways, I don't have time for you. Number, I'm going to do a whole series. And, and that, that was disrespectful. You said you didn't have time for me, right? <laughs> All right. That was just Number a disrespectful. Confidence in your competence. My God. That's what you said, man of God. And so, so you were the reason I had to say that. You took a derailment. And I'm going to tell you this. I sat in the parking lot the next service and watched it on Facebook Live to make sure that you didn't repeat that again in the next service. And you did not. And you did not. Mama. And I sat there and I, and I sat there for 30 minutes shocked. And I was like, wow, God, because what you did not know is I had a whole little situation lined up that evening that, <laughs> that, 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 that I was going to entertain. And so I was like, so when, when a girl was telling me this, I said, man, I don't care what Pastor Conway says. Mm-mm-mm. Tonight, I got somebody that, that I'm finna sleep with. So I don't, I, don't, I don't need him messing up nothing. My, my, my. Future wifey, I'm helping you. Future <laughs> wifey, I'm helping you. Don't worry. I'm trying the best I can. Okay, future wifey, I'm trying. You Go try, ahead. and when you did that, Pastor Conway, I sat there and I was like, "Wow, God mm. is speaking and moving." That was January the fifth, and so throughout this whole year, I've been on this journey of of chasing after God. And so I launched this podcast on April the fifteenth, and God said, "Latarius, I want you to be transparent with the world. Let let people in on your journey." Mm. And so that's, that's exactly what I did. And so I'm real open about my my journey. I talk about the mistakes that I made in my past marriage, and then God told me. That Latarius, you will never be faithful to your wife unless you first become faithful to me. That's a fact. And so I said, okay, God, I hear what you're calling me uh, to. And this is season two. And I said, God, I want you to orchestrate the people that you want on the podcast this Mm. season. Mm. And so uh, when I went to your people, I said, listen, I got to have Pastor Conway (laughs) on this episode because this is the episode that I'm going to make a vow of abstinence Come until on. I get married. And I said, the only person I feel uh, led to share this moment with me is Pastor Conway Edwards because God directly spoke out of all those people in that church. Mm. He had to speak directly to my stubborn self um, through you. Yeah. Uh, and and it was so powerful. And and so a lot of people was like, Dr. Conway, he, 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 he not going to do it. He's not going to be on your podcast. It's kind of challenging. He's really <laughs> focused on his ministry and all that. And I said, God, I said, if he's supposed to do it, then so I'm going to tell you what I did. I'm going to keep it real. I told God, I said, God, I'm going to be abstinent 
on January the 1st, regardless. But if Pastor Conway doesn't agree to it, I'm going to go ahead and have a little bit more fun in December <laughs> until January the 1st, and then I'm going to make a commitment. And so Lord, when, when, when you committed to it, I literally just sat there, and I got off the phone, and tears just streamed down my face. And I said, God, you love me that much that you're pursuing my heart. You're pursuing me. And these crazy negotiations I try to have with God, God said, Letaris, enough of that. I'm calling you to a higher level. That's awesome. And so I thank you so much for uh, taking the time to be on this episode. What made you decide to agree to be on this episode? Well, for a long time, for the last 20 years, man, uh, I've done the singles thing so wrong in my life that I just have a passion. I have a passion. I think young men and women, singles in the kingdom of God, are the most potent weapon in God's army. Wow. And I believe that because of the distractions of this world, that the enemy has come after the single most potent weapon in God's arsenal. And we have been distracted, we have been confused, and we have been rendered and neutralized because we have looked to everything else except what God's called us to do. Wow. So I have always had a passion to release God's people who are single toward his purposes because I think when they do that, they are operating in their calling, which therefore means they're, they have an undivided devotion to God, which therefore means they can't be easily distracted by the enemy. And to see church people, to see people who go to church every now and again, get so distracted, so tangled up. The reason we have a, a, a marriage problem is because we have a dating problem. And if you ever fix a dating problem, then you can fix the marriage problem. But until you do that, you have desperate people getting married in desperate situations, which is no wonder why we end up with marriages that only last a month to six months or six years, and then people throwing in the towel. Wow. And because I know the far-reaching ramifications of that, because now you're going to have kids that don't grow up with mom and dad in the home. Yes. Now you're going to have kids that grow up that only see dad every two weeks. Now you have kids that are going to carry on the generational curse, which means now you go to the fourth and fifth generation, and now you have kids that has never seen what a good marriage looks like, and it just breaks my heart to, to, to see the cycle continue over and over and over again. And I'm asking my friends or my pastor friends, hey, man, don't you see why? You, you can't just let them marry anybody. Yes. Then what happens in the church is then they're going to get a divorce. Then they have a split family. Then the cycle, cycle continues, continues with 70% of kids in the African-American community um, without a mom and dad in the home together. They've never seen the model. Since it's an option for their parents, then it's an option for them. Yes. So either then they don't get married at all, or if they get married, divorce is an option. So the cycle continues. And when did this start? I mean, I know you were, uh, let's talk about years. You were, you were involved at Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship mm -hmm. as a director of singles in what years? I, uh, I did it for two years at my last tenure at Oak Cliff. I spent about 13 years at Oak Cliff under my senior pastor, who I love so much. And then he decided that, hey, man, uh, God moved the ministry from like 15 people to like over a thousand, I mean, like in a year. Yeah, and everybody I, keeps I, talking I, about I, that. And I was just blown away. And and he he thought that um, that I needed to that I needed to use those gifts and abilities to advance the kingdom of God. That's powerful. And he he helped me facilitate me planting the church up in the north. And uh, every semester since then, we had to build a building or add a service or do something <laughs> else. No, for real. Yeah, I mean, it's been growing we, exponentially. We, we still can't even figure out what's going on because this just little dude from Jamaica <laughs> trying to just serve Jesus, and all of a sudden, this is what you got. It's because you're so real. Uh, people recognize your realness. People re recognize your authenticity, and that's what's missing in the kingdom of God is people mm -hmm. that are real. Mm -hmm. And so, and and even in the sermon that, because in order to to prick my heart, like I grew up in church. Right. You know, I grew right. up in church. I grew up Pentecostal. Um I mean, was filled with the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues at the age of 12. Right. Uh, God called me to ministry when I was about 18 years old. I used to go around and preach at churches and prisons and youth detention centers and all that. But um, I just felt like the church was lacking this yeah. realness. It kept yeah. seeing, it was a, a big gap between the information from the world and what the church 
gave us information and people had to look to Oprah to talk about realistic my, stuff and, my, and all my. that. And I was yeah. like, God, this is a big gap. And so what you have done is bridge the gap. You're real, you're relatable, you're transparent, you're authentic, and you're a leader of leaders. Mm. And so, and that's what's so dope about you. And so that's why people are drawn to you. Uh, Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship has hired me to produce their Christmas and Easter productions for the last five years. That's awesome. And I, every, it never fails, but every time I was at that church, people would talk about the single ministry wow. and how it hasn't been the same since they said i'm telling you pastor conway and jada they led a dynamic singles ministry and i believe that that's the yeah. that's the gap that's missing like yeah. singles ministries uh unfortunately are taken as a joke in the church it really is it re- and it breaks my heart because it plays into the devil's plan of this is just a joke man don't do anything with this right nobody cares about singles you just go do your thing and it shatters me the bible is clear man it tells you listen i want you to have a relationship with jesus i call it master mission moods mate that's the order you must fall in love with jesus then you must be clear about your mission then you must manage your moods and your passion then you're ready to find a mate what the enemy has done is inverted it and said you must find a mate <laughs> you must you must you know figure out whether you like them or not manage your moods <laughs> then you need to figure out whether you, what you want to do in life and then if you have time then go to god but 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 all that the enemy has done is turned it upside down yes. and we are now creatures of our passions and because we are all we care about is a mate and when you do that you're now in a crisis so you're making a decision decision about a mate when you're least prepared about it because you're so desperate for one and i don't know why we keep repeating the cycle but it 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 really makes me frustrated and have a holy discontent (laughs) with the fact that people still do the same thing over and over again this new year's eve i promise you people gonna go find somewhere to go meet somebody somewhere thinking well if i just get to the right place i'm gonna find the right person instead of starting it with your master becoming your best friend with jesus then ask him to tell you what your mission is hey adam here's what i want you to do then make sure you can manage your moods so that they don't derail you because if they're derailing you now they're going to derail you in marriage and then after that then you're prepared and qualified to find a mate but i'm telling you i'm telling you i'm telling you when people look to their mates to meet needs only god can meet you will always end up in a frustrating situation people marry to get people married to be happy and they get a divorce to be happy they do it all the time <laughs> wow. they get married because i'm wow. not happy i'm not happy i'm too lonely i'm too lonely let me just find a mate and i'll be happy okay great you get one well then they take you off no i'm not happy anymore so i got i need a divorce because i need a divorce because i'm not happy anymore so let me find get a divorce i can be happy you marry to get happy and you wow. get a divorce to get happy and it drives me bananas that we can't see the cycle that we do over and over and over again pastor that's good you said they get married to get happy and get a divorce Every to time. get happy. Every time, man. I've never thought about it like that. And but that is so truth, true. It's it the truth. truth. It's Absolutely. the God honest truth. And they don't realize it. And so that's why they go to the next marriage and then the next marriage because they don't understand the cycle and the pattern that they're on. And the enemy has a field day because nobody looks internally to say, why am I doing this? Why do I think that I can't find genuine, sincere happiness in God so that when I'm coming to find a mate, I don't need you to make me happy because I'm already happy by myself. So yes. I need somebody else who is fully content with who they are. Yes. So when we come together, we can really be one and I don't have to beg you for anything because you are already who you are, full content, having your needs met in Jesus. He's your best friend. So when we come together, I now come to give to you, not to take from you because you get married for what you can give, not for what you can get. But too many people, when you're desperate, you get married for what you can get because you're looking at what can they give me? What can they give me? Yes. What can they make me happy? And now the cycle continues. Anyways, I can do this all day, man. So so might as well you cut me off and keep going. Right? No, let me tell you something. I'm, 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 let me, I'm, I'm soaking all this in. I'm soaking all of this end because i refuse to get married again and it end in divorce divorce is the most painful thing uh december the 29th which is yesterday was Mm. my five year anniversary of my Mm. divorce 
And so all of this is so intentional. The fact that we're sitting here on December the 30th recording this episode and I'm taking this vow of abstinence to do things right this yeah, time awesome, is, is all intentional. And so I'm just humbled and submitted to the purpose that God has for me. I heard about this powerful series, this this masterclass that you're doing mm. um, called Pain Free Dating. Come on, somebody. So what is that about? What led to this? Man, listen, listen. So I, you know, one of my passions is singles, right? So we have a lot of singles in our church. And so uh, I started a masterclass called Single and, and Thriving. And <laughs> had a lot of people, you know, a lot of people in there. So I did it. And then they're like, Pastor, can we continue this? I'm like, listen, listen, listen. <laughs> I, I ain't leading a singles ministry. I'm trying to lead a whole church. Okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> So then I said, all right, all right, all right, no problem. So then started doing Zoom calls with them just to answer their questions. Single parents have questions. Young 18-year-olds have questions. 50-year-olds have So I'm just going back and forth with them because I really do have a passion for young adults yes. and for singles in this area and for us to at least try and do it right. Yes. I'm not asking for perfection. Ain't nobody perfect. Yes. But I'm trying to say, can we see our patterns and try to learn from them so that we just don't repeat the same yes. thing? Yes. So in light of that, I said, all right, come on, let's do this. So I wanted to lay out for them in this pain-free dating class i said let me do it and let me just let me just lay out for you 12 sessions on what i think god desires biblically for us to do because nobody's talking about it everybody will say yeah. meet your needs right where you are yes. so what i did was i laid out my, jada and i laid out 12 sessions that talks about the whole nine yards so we talked about things like um is god your best friend the marriage you did not see the baggage you bring Four needs only God can meet. The process of biblical dating. Here's another one. Finding a, a spiritual covering. Don't let me get talking about that. In every area of ooh, yeah, no talk. I need to say area that. of our lives. Yes, we go to we go to somebody for help. If you want investing help, yep. you're gonna find an investor. Say, hey, talk man, about it. What should I do here? If you're gonna buy a house, you're gonna find a realtor and say, Hey, what area should I do? What do you yes. think about this? If you want to if you want to get help physically, every area. But when it comes to dating, we just think we can do it by ourselves. <laughs> we just we don't need no help. I'm grown. I'm I'm grown. Yeah. Yes. So, so the second most important decision in your life, and you're leaving it up to chance, when, you, when you're going to be your most unwise person because <laughs> your heart's engaged, you're in love, yes. your heart's flattering, yes. you're dying to get to the, to the altar, and, and that's when you don't want somebody to help you, yes. you ain't nothing but a fool. That's yes. what you are. You ain't, the Bible calls you a simpleton because you're making the, most, the second most important decision after following Christ, and you're saying to yourself, I'm going to make this all by myself. That's when the pilot is in the ear and he can't see. That's why he needs instruments and he needs to trust his instruments. T you want to do this by yourself and you don't want nobody around you to say to you, well, hold on. If he won't meet with another man, but yes. he just want to get to you, then that means something about the dude. Come yes. on, man. Yes. He can't do the or. Or if he want to sleep with you before he get married, l listen to how stupid this is. You want to sleep with you before marriage and you don't mind because you're getting the benefit of it. Watch this now. When he wants to cheat on you, you don't mind. You don't mind when he's sleeping with you because you're the beneficiary, right? So, so God, sorry, but we're not going to follow your rules. Watch this now. When he wants to cheat on you or you want to cheat on her, later on, no, all of a sudden you want to get mad. Well, God should be mad at you because when you cheated and God, God said, I'm still going to love you and forgive you. But when that person don't want to act a fool, you want to be in your feelings. No, no, you should have been in your feelings when you were giving God the middle finger. Can I be real? Like Yo, that? teach. When no, you keep were giving God the middle finger talking about, I'm getting it on with you. Yes. You are fine with that. But when now the tables turn and they want to go sleep with somebody else and you don't like it, all feelings. of a sudden you're in your feelings. You're in your feelings. You should have been in your feelings before because he showed you or she showed you that they weren't trustworthy because they were okay to violate God's laws and direction before marriage. So you have no proof that they're not going to violate it afterwards. Mm -hmm. And the best, the best indication of future behavior is past behavior. And so if you want yeah. to know what they're going to do in the future, look at what they're doing with you now. Mm -hmm. I'm out, Doc. I'm done. What else you want? Listen. So, anyways, let me finish. Conway, this you done, you done, you done offended everybody. <laughs> you done just offended everybody. You done stepped on everybody's toes across the whole world. Watch this, Doc. So, um, in addition to that, who are you becoming? Uh, I did a thing called Master Mission Moods and Mate. I did a thing called Playgrounds and Playmates. <sighs> Who you hanging with? Playgrounds and Playmates. Oh, don't don't let me get started on that. <laughs> no, just go ahead to touch on that. Let me, let me help you out. Uh, Proverbs thirteen twenty says. Um, um, Hang with the wise, yeah, and you'll be wise. Yeah, companions of fools, you gonna suffer harm. Not the fool, <laughs> you gonna suffer harm. Yet still, we hang out with fools all the time. Yeah, thinking we can get away with it. 
You never do. You going to suffer harm, not the fool. The fool, this is what the fool does, so they know how to get in and out of stuff. <laughs> you the wise one trying to hang with a fool talking about, I'm trying to bring them up. You're not going to bring them up. They're going to hurt you. Yes. So choose your friends wisely Good. because they will determine the trajectory of your life. So if you only have friends that want to go to the club, then you got the wrong friends, man. There Come it on. is. If you only have friends that want to sit around, drink, get drunk, smoke, yeah. uh, watch porn all day, if that's all they want to do, you yeah. got the wrong friends, man. Yes. You got to have some friends that's going to lift you up to a spirit. Just ask, just ask Samson. Samson had the wrong friends, yeah. which is why he was always gambling, playing tricks, and womanizing yeah. because he had the wrong friends. He disobeyed his mom and dad. He disobeyed the laws of God. And nobody in his life could 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 call him out on it so he would walk according to God's word. I'm mm. just trying to help somebody mm. out. Yeah, you happen. You happen. You happen. So, so, so then I have the five traits of your future spouse. And then I have, can we just be friends? That's a whole nother level. Can men and women just be friends? That's what I want to talk about. Lord have mercy. That's what I want to talk about. You don't want to yes, go I there. Yes, I do. You're going to lose some followers so, on this one. So, so is it possible? I did an episode at the beginning of season one with... Uh, <laughs> With your girl, um, um, Lady Jade, and we did an episode Lady about Jade's my girl. Yeah, yeah, that's your homie. Y'all, y'all from Jamaica together. <laughs> so, so y'all tight. So the the episode was pl platonic. What, what can you have same sex friendships while in relationships, or or opposite sex? Yeah, can you have opposite sex friendships while in relationships? Yeah. And we talked about that, the challenge of that. But you saying, can you be homies with somebody? Of the opposite sex. So here's the challenge. So, so you got to remember the Bible only knows two relationships. You got to remember this. She's either your wife or she is a friend. It don't know none in between. <laughs> Just remember that. That's yeah. the only two the Bible knows. Yeah. So then uh, culturally and sociologically, what we have determined is because it's so much easier for guys to talk to girls yeah. than for guys to talk to guys. Because when a guy talks to another guy, you got to have character, man. <laughs> the dude ain't fooling with you if you don't have no character. Yeah. You don't you show up late. You're not on yeah. time, all that. A girl says, oh, but well, he's so sweet. <laughs> Let me just still hang with him, right? So the challenge then is there is some kind of chemistry going on. And at the end of the day, usually somebody in there likes somebody in there yeah. and would hope that the relationship would someday turn. Now you can play all the yeah. games you want. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, that's just my own boy. But, <laughs> but, but deep inside you'd be like, ooh, if she ever knows. If she ever give me a chance. Uh, come on yeah. now. Yeah. You know I'm talking the truth. So that's the chance. So because of that one, any relationship you have to stop when you get married, mm. you probably shouldn't be having it in the first place. Mm. Mm. Any relationship you got to, start. if you're married, say okay, hey man. Um, <laughs> well, you know I'm getting married on Saturday, so uh, we gotta adjust uh, yeah. the relationships. Uh, <laughs> in any kind of disclaimer like that, you got to just say, hey, listen, deuces, that ain't right. Because our standard is not the rest of the world. Our standard is what God says. You have two kinds of relationship: one that's your spouse, and one that's your sister in the Lord. If, it, if you ain't thinking bad thoughts about your sister in the law, yeah, yeah. you ain't trying to sleep with your sister in the law. Right. Either your sister or your spouse, only two relationships you should be having. Yes. I believe that because we have allowed the world to define our relationships and not the Bible to define our relationships, that's why we end up in trouble. People getting hurt, it getting messy. And that's why we can't have good brothers that hold us accountable because we don't have no brothers because we only have sisters who 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 are who we're trying to impress or they're trying to impress us. There it is. There it is. That makes sense? That it's makes a big a deal. Whole though. It's a big, bunch of sense. It's a big deal. Lastly, on the issue of guys and girls. The guy, but the Bible says He's supposed to be responsible. Ooh, this is painful, man. This is just painful. Teach. The Bible says the guy's responsible. He has a responsibility of guarding your heart. The Bible says, above all this, guard your heart, right? Right. We have a job of guarding our hearts, but because men are usually, because of creation order, the leader, that means it means we have a responsibility of, of trying to make sure that we're guarding the, the ladies' hearts too. So the problem with guys is we just want to have free willy conversation thinking that ain't nothing in it. I mean, I, ain't, I didn't say I like you or nothing. I'm just trying to talk. But the more you talk to a girl, because a girl is a responder, mm. that means she is already looking for marriage. So she's trying to figure, okay, is this the guy? Is this not the guy? And she's a responder. So when you just call and say, hey, hey girl, what you up to? I just I know I'm going to do. Just want to see how you're doing. She'd be like, oh, he's giving me attention. 
attention. Okay, cool. So now her heart starts to flutter. Maybe this guy likes me. Maybe he doesn't like me. I don't know. But I want to keep talking to him to see. So now you see this girl's heart's fluttering. Mm. And most guys... Uh, take advantage of that and say, well, okay, well, she liked talking to me. I yeah. liked her. Let's keep going. Knowing he has no interest in her, or if he does, he want to just, you know, yeah. do something yeah. and then leave it alone, but no long-term commitment issues. And then he just carries her and leads her on. No wonder she despises men. Watch this now. Watch this now. No wonder she despises men and decide that, you know what? I don't like none of y'all no more. Yeah. I'm just going to do this to y'all. That's the danger that you create if you keep allowing men to wantonly just go after and talk to 100 girls all he wants and just do his thing. He catches them in a vulnerable situation. Mm. Their heart starts to flutter. They haven't been hugged in 10 years. And so all of a sudden, they just say, hey, man, let's go. And you end up in a place you never want to be in with a kid you never wanted to have mm. simply because you were careless with trying to guard and protect her heart. That making sense, dog? Man, let me tell you something. You hit me. <laughs> you hit me because I did, man. I, uh, I had a whole conversation. I'll be transparent. I had a conversation this morning with a friend who just said, Later, I just can't be your friend. Like, I want more. And me and her, we ain't never done nothing, having mm -hmm. kissed, having did nothing. And she mm -hmm. said, I just can't be your friend because I actually like you. She right. said, I don't open my heart up to people and I talk to you and. I want more and you don't want anything. And I was like, well, I just, I mean, you know what I'm saying? And, That's and, what the guys say all the time. And I'm like, dude, you can't do that because she is always, a woman is always thinking about, from the, from the, I know some of the ladies yeah. going to be mad at me no, right it's now. True, from They're going to be mad at me right little, now. Always talking about marriage. Just follow with me now. From the moment they find they're dreaming about their wedding. That's what they're dreaming about. Yep. Guys trying to figure out how I can, okay, how I'm going to make money, how I'm yep. going to provide, all that. She's thinking about her wedding. Yep. Because for a woman, what matters in this world is, am I beautiful enough to survive? What matters to a guy at the core of him is, do I have what it takes to survive? Yes. Can, I, can I provide? Can I do that? Yes. She's thinking, am I beautiful enough? So once a guy shows up, she's trying to figure out, am I beautiful enough to him? Yes. Which is why her relationship with her dad is so important. Because he, she's saying to him, is, am I beautiful enough to my dad? Yes. And then if that relationship wasn't there, yes. then she's looking for it from every man that she ever meets. 100%. And if that's not the case that they're waiting on it, that means they've been hurt so much that they don't want to be hurt again. So they put a lock on their hearts and say, no man will ever hurt me no more. Therefore, I'm just going to stay tough because no man will hurt me again because she's been hurt too much. Mm, mm, mm. Anyways, man, you can find all of this stuff at painfreedating.com. It's a whole webinar we did. People can, people can go check it out, painfreedating.com. And it's just a biblical approach, a biblical approach to the concept of dating. You're tired of getting hurt. You're tired of being pain. Then do it God's way. Try that and let's see how it goes. So you can pick it up there and you can go from there. It's a whole 12-session series that we've done. I think it's extraordinarily helpful. And it's a lot of our content. We've got a bunch of books that we've written on the topic. But the, in that pain-free dating, those 12 se video sessions, it really lays out what I believe the Bible tells us that we ought to at least be in pursuit of. I'm not saying this is a formula, do this. and I'm I'm just saying it's an attempt to lay out yes. a game plan for us trying to do it in a biblical God honoring way. So as we as we go down this journey of abstinence, you hear all kind of information, misinformation or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what my journey is, I want to walk in the spirit of holiness where not only am I practicing abstinence, but I'm not masturbating or anything. What do you have to say when people say biblically, there is nothing in the Bible about masturbation. You hear the stuff about don't spill your seed on the ground or whatnot. But what do you believe that you can be abstinent and you should be allowed to masturbate? You sure you want to hear my opinion? 100%. On that? You're sure? 100%. All right, all right, all right. Uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament is pretty fascinating. Um, in the Old Testament, you had the law. We live on the law. In the New Testament, you live on the grace. Yes. In the Old Testament, it says, hey, man, listen, don't covet a man's wife. Don't do that, all that, right? It tells you clearly, don't, 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 don't try to get another man's wife or else there are consequences. That. In the New Testament, on the grace, it ups the ante. So it's not just... Come on, talk about it. It's not just don't covet, don't lust off, and don't, don't go get another man's wife and sleep with her. In the New Testament, it is. Don't you think? Don't, 
No, don't even, even think about it. <laughs> so, 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 so the person that argues, well, the Bible don't say nothing about maceration, that's because you don't understand hermeneutics and biblical principles. Biblical principles because the New Testament tells us, hey man, you don't even get to think about another man's wife like <laughs> yeah. that. You don't even get to think about another girl like that. Because if you think about her, it's seen. just as if you have committed the act of fornication or adultery. Yeah. So for a man to say, I can masturbate and not think about a woman, Oh, then you, you, you just a liar or something. But yeah. you ain't, the truth ain't in you at all. <laughs> yeah. So therefore, the idea is, whatsoever things are pure, think on these things. Think on the these things. The Bible is so clear, man. Listen, self-control. Here's what a godly man looks like. It's the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness. Here's the one you don't like. Self-control. There it is. So you don't like that one. Nobody no, likes that no, one. No, I don't like that one. Because once you have to do self-control, then the, the desire to masturbate comes out of a lack of self-control, which means you're not in control of your passions. Mm. Therefore, the problem is we have so sexualized our culture, and our culture is so now a part of us that we think we can't do it. And that's because you have awakened love before it's time. Oh. So you go back to when you were five, six, seven, eight years old, your parents shouldn't have you watching foolishness on the TV or in magazines or wherever you watch it yeah. or online but then when you get to 14, 15, 16 stuff opens up to you that you yes. have no business being opened up so now in your brain you have a track that says this is what we do this is what we do now in most of our brains there is a massive freeway that says sex is the answer sex is the answer sex is the answer that you don't even realize how worldly your mind has become because of your culture because you did not stir up your affections for God and and starve your affections for the world. And because people don't fast anymore against the stuff for the greater good of the spirit, you end up thinking something is normal that's actually extraordinarily ungodly. Mm. Mm. Does that make mm. sense, though? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I can't argue that. I can't refute it. In other it. words, all I'm saying is we've trained ourselves this way. Yes, we have. So we know, we know can't get off the train because it's so normal. Now Christians are arguing, well, at least I ain't sleeping with her. Yes. I mean, I masturbated. At least that's better than that. Yes. And now we're comparing sins. Instead of comparing ourselves to Jesus, we're comparing ourselves to each other because or or or. Ooh, or First Corinthians chapter 2. Our spiritual senses have so been dulled that the best we can do now is simply say to ourselves, well, I'm just trying to make it one day, so I'm not <laughs> sleeping with her, so I'm just looking at stuff on, on, the, on, the, on my computer and on my yeah. iPad and on my phone, and man, what? At least I'm not sleeping. I ain't getting nobody pregnant. Yeah. And, and you're making it look like that's a badge of honor Yes. because you haven't done one thing, and you're patting yourself on the back when God said that. Your standard ain't your homeboy. <laughs> your standard is the Bible and me, so live like me and not like your homeboy see and that's what i did this past year i kept saying well i ain't having sex with all the women i could have sex with i'm right. having sex with a few but i ain't having sex with all the women i could right. actually have access to and god said well you a joke that's like it. like really like that is not the standard i'm the standard you can't compare your homeboys just that's why i said what you said just convicted me because i would do that stuff you know and um yeah, God is calling us to a higher place and a higher dimension, and we got to uh, stop playing games. But that's why your playmates, the guys in your, in your corner, are so important. What we don't have today is people that are spurring each on, Hebrews, spurring each on to good works and good deeds. What we have is people that are saying, hey, man, listen, you got to just do you, man. Just do your truth, man. Forget the Bible. Yes. Just do your truth. If, if it don't make you feel good, don't worry about it. Yeah. Just, just do you. Do what makes you happy. The Bible is not concerned about your happiness. <laughs> the Bible is concerned about your holiness. Your by righteousness. Way, by the way, that's the problem with a lot of preachers, including me. Because we love to tell people that God care about your happiness. God don't care. If he cared about your happiness, then he would not send Jesus to the cross. Jesus wasn't happy on the cross. He cared about his holiness and the fact yes. that he needed to save the world, not that he wanted him, his son to be happy. So if he didn't care about Jesus, his happiness, but his holiness, why do you think he cared about your happiness that much? That's why you got to watch the songs you sing. Because the songs you sing tell you, puts you in the center of your world. You're not supposed to be in the center. God's supposed to be in the center, not you. There but when is. you put yourself in the center, now you think life's all about you. Life ain't about you. Life's about Jesus and you orbiting Jesus' world, not Jesus orbiting your world. Oh, my God. Pastor Conway. My, my, my. Man, you preaching the whole word today. This is, this is, this is, this, I, that's why I know that God, 
That's why I know God ordained this moment in my life. Mm. And God ordained you to be a part of this moment in my life. And one thing, I may not listen to God all the time, but I do actually recognize his voice. Mm. And so when he speaks, I, I go follow. So uh, thank you so much. What I, what I would like for you to do, just from an impromptu standpoint, I'm submitted to, to your words right now. I want you to take me through a vow of abstinence, and I'm ready to make this commitment on today. But, man, first of all, let me just tell you, I'm just, I'm just really, really proud that you are, you are trying to honor God with your life. I just think so few people want to do that uh, these days. I think they only care about themselves. And the fact that you are just trying to say, God, I want to put you first. I want to honor you. I want you to be my best friend. I want to yes. go to you first. I think that's commendable. Uh, it's this is the easy part of it. The hard part is when you got to live it out. 100%. The hard part is when is when Friday night shows up and ain't nobody around and you gotta say, "All right, Jesus, it's me yep. and you." Yep. That's the harder part. It's it's six months from now when you be like, "Listen, man, at least I did six <laughs> months. Let me give myself a pat on the back." No. Uh, you know what I mean? That's the harder part. So yeah. so first of all, man, I just wanna I just wanna ask you: Are you are you saying today? before God and before these witnesses that you are renewing your commitment to love him more than you love yourself. If you agree, please say, I will. I will. Number two, knowing the principle that purity leads to clarity, are you committing before God and these witnesses that you will pursue Purity so that you can see him clear. The Bible says, the Bible says, um, blessed, blessed is the one, the pure in heart, for they shall see God. A lot of people think they're seeing God when they're impure. You can't see God when you're impure. So my question to you is, are you committing to purity so that you can see God and you can see who God wants you ultimately to marry? If you agree, please say, I do. I do. Thirdly, are you committing today before these witnesses, but more importantly before God, as he is your witness, that you are committing today to surround yourself with godly men that will help you stay on this course and be faithful to your commitment to God and your commitment to these people? If you do and agree, please say, I do. I do. And then the last one, are you committing before God and these people that when times get hard, that you will run to God in prayer, that you will fast away from the things that you know will lead you to violate in this vow and stir your affections for God so that the things of God is what drives you and not your passions for the things of the world. If you agree with that, please say before God and these people, I do. I do. Well, let me pray for you. Father, here's your son, God. He's committing before you. Yes, God. This is not a, this is not a game. Yes, Lord. This is not a joke. This yes, is not Lord. a publicity stunt. Yes, Lord. This is, this is not about any of that. This is about pleasing the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yes, Lord. Pastor, I pray that this will start a revolution yes, all across God. America, God, that men and women will yes, recommit God. to a life of purity, a life yes, of God. abstinence, a life of putting Jesus Christ first in their lives. Yes, Lord. Pa pa Jesus, I beg you in the name of Jesus yes, that a revolution will be started today yes, right God. here in this midst. I pray you'll touch every person. I pray you'll announce yes, every person listening to this every person watching this and that you will anoint them for this assignment yes, God. Yes, and God. God I pray that as they honor you with this area of their lives that you will bring not just anybody but the one perfectly suited for them yes, will God. you do what only you can do and that just like you did for Adam bringing Eve to him I pray that you will do that for every person listening yes, across God. this podcast we pray this in the matchless name of jesus amen and amen and amen heavenly father i just thank you for having me submit to your will god yes god you are abba father god and i thank you god you're omniscient you're omnipresent 
Lord, I just thank you right now for finding value in me, God, to yes, be called God. for such a time as this, yes, Lord. God. Lord, I worship you. I adore you. You are God and God, oh, by yourself. God, I humbly submit myself to your will, God. I ask right now in the name of Jesus for you to anoint me from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet, that in I walk in your power, that I walk in your authority, and I walk in your victory, God. Lord, I thank you for Pastor Conway Edwards for taking this time, God, to cover me on this journey. And God, I thank you in advance for the great exploits that will come through your name. Yes, God. In Jesus' name, I pray. And Father, I pray against the plans of the devil. God, yes, God. I know him, God. It's going to flare up all over. Yes, I God. I pray that you will obliterate his plans right yes, now God. in the name of Jesus. And yes, that God. your perfect will will be done across this wave yes, God. Of, of this new revolution, revolution of believers that yes. are trying to say, God, not my will but thy will be done. Yes, God. Just as you said that in the Garden of Gethsemane, they're saying it right here. Not my will, but thy will be done. Yes, in Jesus' name, amen. Yes, God. Amen, 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 amen. Yes, sir. What a blessing, man. What an encouraging spirit, man. I just pray that this will start, because I promise you, if you solve this one, you'll solve the marriage one. I'm proud of you, man. Thanks for your leadership in this area, too. Really am. I thank you so much for um, being a part of this journey. Um, you're a great man in the kingdom of God, and I don't take it lightly that you've taken out time today to uh, be a part of this. And um, it's interesting how your whole platform, your whole ministry is about moving the hearts of singles to or towards God and God called you to be a part of this. He called you to be a part of this for me. And um, I don't take it lightly. So thank you so much. My absolute honor, man. Listen, I love it. I, it's, it's natural for me because it's part of my call, man. It's part of what God's called me to do. And again, while, well, let me say this a hundred times. While I'm not after perfection, I'm after continuing to mature into the image of who God has called us to be. Yes. So I'm not after perfection for any of y'all, but I'm after getting better every day for the glory of God. That's what we're after, man. That's all That's we can hope for. That's it, man. That's so y'all give it up for, make sure that y'all go to the website. And uh, the website again is what? Painfreedating.com. Painfreedating.com, man. Check it out, y'all. Check it out. Follow us on Dr. Conway Edwards at, on Instagram, and that's where you get it. I'm just honored to be here. Thank you. Any way we can help, by the way, any way we can help, would love to do so. All right. Thank you so much. So uh, let's give it up for my homie. Come on. Pastor Conway Edwards. Thank you. Thank you so much, brother. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks, guys. Anytime I make a big decision, uh, I like to seal that decision in worship. I'm a worshiper, man. I'll tell you, uh, I feel closest to God when I'm worshiping. And just communicating with him through um, song. And I have a special uh, brother on the podcast today because he's walked with me through this journey. I've been knowing this brother for over 12 years and uh, just my homie. And I know y'all hear me talk a lot about a particular situation that I went through a couple of years ago. I went through that situation for three years. But this brother has been there for me, uh, has been walking through that situation with me, praying for me, uh, just a good brother. And, you know, whenever he's around me, we'll just go into some worship and whatnot. Uh, well, he's a worship pastor. He's a, he's a songwriter. He's a recording artist. His brother is just, just a dope individual altogether. And so I couldn't think of a better person to share this intimate space with me than my brother, uh, Michael Bethany. Uh, so Michael Bethany, thank you for joining me. Uh, on the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Uh, what did you think when I said, I am going to be making this commitment of abstinence and I want you to join me and, and bring some worship around this experience? I was like, phew. <laughs> All the time. No, it's kidding. <laughs> no, man, I, man, I really, uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me to be a part of this. This means a lot to me. Uh, you are my brother. And we've been through a lot together. Yeah. We work together. We've done a lot of projects together. And um, we processed. Yes. A lot of, like, stuff. And so when you hit me up with this, I, I thought it was interesting because I'm like, I've been knowing you so long, and we've had some deep conversations. And 
you know, I prayed for you many, many times. Right. And there were those points in which I was like, man, like, what else can I do? Yeah. Um, and then realizing that there's nothing you can do until God does what he's going to do. Oh, come on. Come on. Um, but the best thing I could do was just be a consistent friend and brother. And that feeling was just the love I have for you, just wanting better for you. Yes. I just want it better for you. I, I'm like, I would tell you, man, you, you're better than this, man. Yeah. You're a great dude. Like, you know what God can do with you and all this stuff like that. It's like, you, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. And it's like, you know what? God's timing and the way he deals with the person when a person's ready, uh, that's something that we can't dictate just yes. by passion and love. You can love somebody, but you can't change them. There it is. Um, so you have to accept them and just, you know, let God do his thing. And so when you said that, my mind just went back, man. I was like, wow. I mean, it really moved me. And I immediately was like, I'm there. Yes. Because, like, I want moments like this. Because I've been through and I've seen hurt and I've been hurt, but I've seen God heal. Yes. And God does his best work when we make moments like this happen. Yes. A lot of us are asking God to do something, but we don't want to do anything. There it is. And so the reality is when you make a commitment to God like this, it really materializes what worship really is. Yes. Like it's, this is what, what you're doing right now is really the substance of worship. Like your, like our worship is empty without a sacrifice. Oh, come on. Come on. You know, every, anybody can sing a song, lift their hands and do a dance or whatever, but it's, it's when the rubber meets the road and your praise has to become real life. Do you feel that way? Mm, mm, mm. God, you mean the world to me. I'll do anything for you. Really? The way Jesus said it like this, if you love me and love is the expression of worship. Yes. If you love me, keep my commandments. And it's not like if you love me, you should keep my commandments. It was no, no, no. The natural nature of what it means to love God is to live within the context of that law that governs his people. It's not about religion in the form of what we think it is. Like I got to do this, I got to do this. No, it's about expressing an honor for God. So if I love my wife, I want to do right by her. There it is. I can't say I love you, but I don't want to do anything for you. I love my kids, so I'm going to feed them. Yeah. And I'm going to do whatever it takes to make that happen. Yes. And I say I love God, I want to live for him. And I want to give him the sacrifice. And it's a sacrifice to take care of your kids, sacrifice to be faithful to your wife, and it's a sacrifice to honor God. Amen. I will say this, to just to be deep, because I'm already preaching. Go ahead. The first mention of worship is Genesis 22. And it's Abraham taking his son to the mountain to sacrifice. Mm. First time you hear that word. And he says, we're going to this mountain to worship. And we'll be back. But what worship was in reality was giving up the thing that meant the most to him. Mm. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not I'm not comparing a sexuality to a child, but it is incredibly precious to me. My sexuality is. Yeah. And to give God that is a sacrificial offering of worship and, a, and, a, and an, an offering of worship without sacrifice is not worship at all. Mm-hmm. So what we're doing tonight is truly the inauguration of, of ushering in a new era of life. My God. And we're starting it with the essence of true worship. And this is the kind of worship that God always accepts. Oh, my God. Mike, let me tell you something. You have blessed me. When I tell you, you have blessed me with that word to just seal this covenant, the covenant that I'm making with God. And it's absolutely beautiful. Um, Man, we got our boy K Cooks in here. Man, let me tell you something. Let's just let's just enter in. Let's just go into some worship. I told Mike that uh, I had some particular songs that I wanted him to minister on today that I believe is a soundtrack to this act of worship. And so, uh, Mike, do your thing. I surrender. Everything I give to you Withholding nothing Withholding nothing I 
surrender all to you Everything I give to you Withholding nothing Withholding nothing One more time, sing I surrender all to you Everything I give, I give it to you Withholding nothing Withholding nothing Come on, stay right there Withholding nothing Withholding nothing Withholding nothing Yeah Withholding nothing Withholding nothing Withholding nothing I give you all of me 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 I surrender all to you everything I give I give it to you withholding nothing oh no withholding nothing no 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 withholding nothing withholding nothing I'm gonna withhold nothing Give myself away. Oh, I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Oh, I give myself away so you. Can use me. My life is not my own. Hallelujah, God. To you I belong. Yes, God. Yes, God. I give myself, give myself to you. Hallelujah, God. I worship you right now, God. My life is not my own. You are so worthy, God. You're so worthy. To you I belong. Hallelujah, God. I worship you. Myself. Hallelujah, Give God, myself I worship you, God, I worship you, God. Hallelujah, God, I worship my you, God. life is not my Hallelujah, own. Hallelujah, God, I worship to you. To you, I, you, I belong. Lord, you are worthy, Jesus, God. Jesus, I you're give worthy. myself. Yes, give God. myself yes, to God. you. Yes, God, yes, God, you're worthy, God. I, I give worship myself you. away. God, I give myself yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah, oh. God. Give myself away God, I worship you, So God. that you I want you to use me Yes, God, yes, God I give myself away Yes, God, yes, God Yes, I do Hallelujah, oh, God, I worship you I give myself away God, so you can use me, so God So you use me, can God. use me Hallelujah, And I surrender to you everything I give give it to you withholding nothing yeah 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 withholding nothing withholding nothing yeah withholding nothing yeah Withholding nothing, empty out myself. Withholding nothing, I 
empty out myself Every desire that's not like you Withholding nothing I'm letting it go, letting it go, letting it go I'm letting it go I'm putting on the altar right now Withholding nothing Withholding nothing Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary pure and holy to right and true and with thanksgiving I'll be a living hallelujah God sanctuary A sanctuary, pure and holy God, pure and holy. Hallelujah, God, tried and true. and true. God, I want to do this with Thanksgiving. With Thanksgiving I'll be a living sanctuary, God. Sanctuary. Yes, God. I want to be a sanctuary you can live in. Yes, God. Yes, God. Sanctuary. Live in me. Live in me, Jesus. Sanctuary. Lord, I want to do this for you. Creating me a clean heart and sanctuary. Renewing me a right spirit. You're pleasing God. Sanctuary. This is all I want to be for you. Sanctuary. Lord, for you. Clean out everything that's in the way. No more distractions. No more distractions. I am a sanctuary. Yes, God, I worship you. I am a sanctuary. This is where you dwell. Yes, God. This is your house, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, God. You belong here. Yeah. Yes, God. You belong here. Yeah. This is where you dwell. This is your house, Lord. You belong here. Yeah. You belong. I'm setting things right for your presence to dwell. Yes, God. <laughs> I yes, God. want you to have freedom to move in my life. Yes, God. This is your home. Yes. This is your home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, yeah. God. I worship you. Oh, oh. Hallelujah, yeah. God. Hallelujah. 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 Here's my worship, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's take joy in it. Take joy in it. The sacrifice of worship is real, real, it's real, real Jesus. Take joy in it. This is your dwelling place. Take joy in it. Take joy, take joy, take joy. Joy, my King, in 
what you hear and let it be a sweet sweet sound in your ear I love you Lord and I lift my voice to So rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear, and let it be a sweet. just thank you right now for your presence being in this place God I thank you God for the platform to worship you in spirit and in truth God the people that are watching this episode God I ask that they have an encounter with you God that they feel your presence envelop them as they enter in into this worship experience with us God I ask that you move their hearts As we move into the 2021 year, God, I ask God that that you move people in the way that they've never been moved before. 
2020 was a trying time for a lot of us, God. But God, the number 21 stands for restoration. And so, God, I speak for a restoration over this world, over this country, over this nation. God, I ask that you restore them back to you, God. God, I ask the prayers that people have been praying, the the grieving hearts of of lost souls and and people losing loved ones. God, I ask that you comfort them in the way that only you can. You give unspeakable joy, joy that passes all understanding, God. And we thank you right now in the name of Jesus for your covering, for your anointing, for your dunamis power, God. Envelop us right now in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for this experience. I thank you for this moment. I thank you for this day. God, I ask that you empower me as I go on this journey to fulfill your will, God. Lord, you said that my obedience is linked to other men's freedom. And God, I don't take that lightly. So I give myself away. And I'm withholding nothing. Make me a sanctuary. Use me, God. And I'll be so careful and mindful to give you the praise today and forevermore. I thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Terrace, something you said when you were praying, and I want to pray over you one more time before we end. This is not just a podcast. This is a this is a moment. This is history. Your your future is, is ahead of you. And what unlocks destinies is sacrifice. When you finally say, God, I hear you, and I'm going to obey you, your purpose gets unlocked. Yes. The one thing that God's always looking for in many of our lives is the one thing that we don't ever want to give him. And everyone's got the same prayer. God, give me my purpose. Show me my, show me, get, open up doors. And the key, and it's not that God won't take care because he's been good to you. But there are some prayers God doesn't answer without your obedience. Yes. And it's like, I can't walk down the aisle with a woman who hasn't said yes. Yes. I can't be intimate with somebody who won't say yes. And so I can't give you a child if you won't sleep with me. Yes. And what God is saying, the intimacy between you and me is the key to the purpose and the babies and the fruit and the harvest. But you got to say yes to that thing that gets you down the aisle with me. And it is this kind of moment. Yes. That consummates a true commitment to Christ that brings fruit in your future. There it is. I'm trying to tell you, it's not by mistake that you pray what you pray. There are in there are six stages of manhood. The third stage is a stage of sexuality. We discovered around 12 years old when we discover it. And most men never grow beyond that stage. Yes. You move into the next stage, which is a stage of the warrior. It's when you fight. It's the conquest. It's your purpose. It's when you go into fighting for what's yours. And what happens is men get stuck in the sexual phase. And when it's time to fight, they're not fighting. Huh. They can't fight because they're so distracted and there's always a distraction before you get to your destiny. So what you, what you're releasing right now is I'm eliminating the distraction of sexuality that I, that I met when I was a kid Yes, and I've struggled with it ever since it's ruined relationships. It's ruined marriage. It's ruined all type of things. Yes. It's, it's ruined me. It's ruined my focus. It's ruined my life. I've missed project. I've missed money. Yes. I've missed opportunities because of the distraction. But when I eliminate that by obeying God and cooperating with that, then I can move into the conquest of my purpose and my destiny. And I can fight focused. Because what the enemy uses to take your focus away is condemnation. He takes the condemnation of the sin you've done and he beats you over the head with it and makes you feel worthless. And it makes you not want to try anymore. 
because it feels like a, a failing effort. Yes. But when you overcome that, when you say, no, I'm not going to believe that lie. I'm going to give God what belongs to him. Then God opens the door because that, that ends the false intimacy and really the best worship you can give God is worshiping with your sexuality because that's, that's even more precious to you than money. Yes. Yes. You can have all my money, but you can't have my sexual organ. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Because that's my legacies in that. Yes. My children's in that. Yeah. My name is in that. Yes. And when you give God your name, your identity, mm. he unlocks your future. There it is. This is what the world is worshiping, is worshiping sexuality. Yes. That's why when you move into a place where, God, I'm not going to give you my sexuality, now it's become an idol. Yes. And that's the thing. Well, what are you willing to kill for God? And whatever you kill for God, he'll exchange you something better. Yes. Than whatever you had to. And that's the thing. What you just said, you unlocked that next level of the warrior in you. To not just fight for what's yours, but to win it. Mm, 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 and you and I will say this because I believe this is a prophetic moment. You have had a split heart where you have fought for things but can't really enjoy them. Right. So I've got this and this and this, but I've got no peace in my heart because there's a conflict in my conquest. Yes. A conflict in my conquest. It's a conflict in my conquest. I'm fighting for things because that's the season I'm in, but I'm conflicted because I'm holding on to this. You see what I'm saying? And this is what God wants David to know. This is what God wants Solomon to know. Yes. This is what God is saying to us through, through Paul in the New Testament. This is what Jesus is talking about. It is not just fornication, but it is sexual immorality. It's a distraction of men. Yes. And it holds us hostage from the conquest and the victory God has for you. And you spending time in condemnation, when Jesus, through the book of Romans, Paul wrote it, there is no condemnation. But when you allow sin to dominate your mind, you live in the reality of guilt. And see, that's the game. But what you're releasing in your future is freedom from guilt, freedom from all of that, freedom from that. You're about to get what God has for you. I'm telling you, I, I'm t can I see, tell you what I'm seeing? God, I see, I see angels unwrapping a big gift for you. It's, it's Christmas time, and I see, like, the ribbon, and they're unwrapping it. Like, oh, he's giving that? Okay, pull the gift out. Let's unwrap this. Because he's, he's moved into a place where he's ready for this gift. God gives gifts, but God don't spoil his kids. God, Lord. You know what I'm saying? He gives gifts, but he don't spoil his kids. And when you see your children raise, you know what I'm saying? Because you got kids. When you see your son raise up to a level of maturity, you change the level of the gift you sure. give him. Talk. Talk you, you about say, it. Oh, no. No, I was giving you toys, but I'm, I'm about to give you this, this Xbox now. Yeah. Oh, I was, I was giving you Xbox, but I'm about to buy you a car. Yep. Because you keep elevating the level of your responsibility and your level of responsibility, Teach. it changes the level of reward you get. Teach. And that's what God does. And Jeez. what you said, you just said a hard thing. This is why Paul says God will give you the, the desire and the ability to do what pleases him because you say something that's harder than your desire and ability to achieve. So now God's going to have to help you yes. do this. And when you get in that mix, everything changes. The responsibility is greater, but the rewards are commensurate. Mm, mm, mm. Ooh, that, I'm telling you, that's for you. That's for you. That's a key of intimacy. It's been standing in the way of the intimate connection between you and God because there's an idol there. You just said, God, you don't have to take it. Give it to me. I'll crush it. I'll kill it. And God, you're going to have to help me. Philippians 2, help me with the desire and the ability to do this. I want to pray that over you. It's a supernatural thing that the Holy Spirit does. You don't bring spiritual fruit out of you. The Holy Spirit does it. So I'm going to pray. Father, I thank you for producing in Lateris the spiritual fruit to do what he can't do on his own. And allowing him to experience the joy of Romans 8 and 1, no yes, condemnation God. for those who are in Christ.
And I thank you that he will no longer be trapped by the snare of bondage that he once lived in. I thank you that you'll free his mind, free his thoughts, free his creativity, free everything inside of him that you have given him for, for life and godliness. Free it up. I thank you that it's free and liberated to be fully expressed. And I thank you that tonight is a night that marks a new era in time. Yesterday is over. Today is brand new. Yes, brand new. This is a new season and a new day. Anything that happens from this point forward, God, you are going to reward differently. Yes, God. We're not asking for a pass. We're asking, God, help me do the difficult thing. I'm not leaning on my own understanding, but I'm going to have to rest and lean on you because this is the season where you'll show me what it means for you to give me a desire. Yes, God. And you to give me an ability. If you said I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me, then strengthen me to do it. Yes, God. Strengthen me to do it. Help me with the wisdom. Help him with the wisdom and the strategy to do what you called him to do. In Jesus' name, I'm going to give you one last yes, thing. Yes, God. When I woke up this morning, the Lord gave me two words. He says, Michael, take authority and take accountability. Take authority because this is your ground. You're not, you're not no punk in Christ. Right. Excuse my language. I don't know how that makes some folk feel. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. You're not no punk in Christ. That means you're not weak. Right. You're not soft in Christ. You are a warrior in Christ. Thank y'all for joining me on this journey. I hope that this episode touched you in a way that, I mean, you couldn't even possibly imagine. So I thank you so much for indulging me through this episode. This is very serious to me. And um, just on assignment with God. So thank y'all. Thank y'all. We had a, an amazing year. And um, I just want to thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. <sighs> Dear future wifey, today I made a public vow to save myself until we say I do. You are worth the wait. Our Lord and Savior is worth the wait. For the first time in my life, I feel I am worth the wait. Love of my life, please forgive me for sharing my body with other women on my journey to you. Forgive me for not being patient and waiting on you. I promise you, I'll be free from every soul tie before we encounter. From this day forth, I'm submitted to his will as I deny my own. Baby, I can't wait to pursue your heart the way the Lord has pursued mine unconditionally we will be purpose partners our next dimension is predicated on our obedience god will do great exploits through us and roll out the blueprint of our destiny i love you so much i'm looking forward to discovering uncovering and recovering your love your future hubby thank you for listening to the dear future wifey podcast remember be lit Live intentionally and transparently and don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.